Hey you two, I am eight days post-op double jaw surgery. Sorry for the background, it's the only place that has good natural light right now and it's the only place that's away from my kids that are home right now. So this is where it's going to be, <laughs> just a very pink horrific background. Um, like I said, I'm currently eight days post-op, so I'd like to run through the last eight days and tell you about how it's been. Um, so first, I've got notes on my phone, so I'll be looking at them. Um, so I'll start at day zero, which is the day of my surgery, which is Tuesday. Um, I I had my surgery at noon, so I got to the hospital about quarter to ten or so, and they checked me in and did all my paperwork and got me into pre-op, um, and then we hung out in pre-op until noon pretty much. Um, changed into a hustle gown, got an IV, which... I'm still kind of bruised. You can see it right there. <laughs> it's a really painful IV. I don't think I had a good one. Um, and they gave me fluids. Um, I think I got a dose of antibiotics. Um, I was really drowsy after they gave me the Versed. Um, so I don't really remember the trip from pre-op to the operating room. But I remember being in the operating room and seeing my surgeon and saying, hey. And I remember seeing one of the assistants that I've actually seen in his office that had commented that she had wanted to sit in on my surgery um, because it's something she hadn't seen yet. And so she was there and I remember saying hi to her and then blank. Um, the next thing I remember, I was in post-op, and I don't remember seeing anything. I think my, when I get, when I'm in pain um, or uncomfortable, I close my eyes, um, and that's just how I manage the pain. Like, I don't want the extra stimulation, so I don't remember seeing anything. I just remember my tongue being so dry like it just felt like there was cotton on my mouth I remember asking for water and then not being allowed to give it to me yet um, because I wasn't like alert and up yet I just been extubated um, probably the next thing I remember I was up in my room at that point is about 4 30 or 5 o'clock um, in the afternoon and my husband was there my kids were there um, where I had my surgery was actually where I worked, um, so I know a lot of the, the nurses and a lot of the staff. Um, so a couple people that I was close friends with, as well as co-workers with, um, actually came and said hi to me. And I, apparently, I don't really remember this, but I was told this is I give everyone a fist bump. <laughs> a little... Um, I don't really remember that um, too clearly. Uh, I remember trying to kind of talk and joke, um, but I was still really out of it. Um, the main thing I dealt with was um, post-surgical nausea, so I vomited a lot of blood. Um, so I had a vomit bag um, that the nurse gave me, and we re later realized that it was re related to the steroids I was on. Um, it was, I think, after my second dose that I realized it would it happened directly after the steroids. Um, but she got me some Zofran, which didn't do anything, and so she got me some Phenagrin, which did amazing but it knocked me out so the only other thing is I drank like a little juice and some water on day zero 
uh, via syringe. The nurses kind of didn't know what to do with me because at first they tried to give me straws. And I was like, no, I can't have a straw. Um, can you get me a 10 milliliter syringe and I can work it that way. And so she got me some syringes, she got me juice and some water. And I was able to drink that and make my tongue feel a lot better and my mouth a lot better. I woke uh, up around 2.30. Again, she gave me the steroids. I, as, like, as soon as she got out of the room, not like two or three months later, I was vomiting again. Um, so I called her back. Um, we got the, the anti-nausea meds. She gave me a new vomit um, bag. And that seemed, like, from then on, we knew to do the anti-nausea first, and then the steroids. It was, uh, Decadron was my steroid. And that's to help with the swelling and inflammation. So, day one, uh, I had peed several times throughout the night. They gave me a clear liquid breakfast, so I had some chicken broth some jello, some juice, more water. Um, pretty much all my surgeon told me pre-op was as long as I was peeing and drinking, I was safe to go home. So I pretty much just focused on that. I had gotten up out of bed, um, sat in a chair, and changed into my own personal pajamas instead of hospital gowns. I felt a little bit more comfortable. My surgeon came by around 11 and looked at me and examined me and we talked and I said I'm ready to come home. Um, so I was discharged around 11.30 but he wanted me to go straight to his office to change out my rubber bands. Um, so that's what we did. We went straight to the office after discharge and they took a CT scan and a camera x-ray and changed out my my rubber bands and told me how they wanted them applied and gave me a baggie of rubber bands that I could change out throughout the day. Day two, um, I was able to tolerate being up and about in the house for about an hour, both in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, besides that, I was napping, laying on the couch, closing my eyes. Like, it, I was so swollen, I was so painful, that pretty much it was, um, just on the couch. But I was able to be up for a little bit um, and kind of stretch my legs and stretch my muscles. Um, yeah, I just mainly drank soup, drank water, um, and slept. Swelling had gotten worse, like I had said. I was still very painful. Um, I used Q-tips to kind of clean out all the blood clots and crustiness in my nose because you can't blow your nose. Um, so I just spent a lot of time cleaning out my nose um, and making sure I could start breathing through my nose. Uh, day three. So the swelling was the worst. So swollen, my face felt so tight. Um, that night, I was up probably three or four times just taking meds to control the pain, uh, drinking water because my mouth felt dry. Um, again, I could only be up for about uh, one to one and a half hours, both in the morning and then kind of late afternoon, and I was just done. So day four, the swelling started out as bad as day three when I first woke up, but went down gradually throughout the day. Um, by the end of day four, I was starting to look a little bit more normal. Um, like my myself. Um, I was able to start spoon feeding instead of using syringes and squeeze bottles um, 
I was able to use a little baby spoon and kind of feed myself that way. Um, I went out for the first time. The kids, I have two kids, um, they were being kind of cabin fevery, so we decided to take them to a little indoor play area where I could sit and they could play. And by the time we hit two hours, I was done. I was just like, we need to go home now. Um, so I think I pushed myself a little bit too much that day. Um, so yeah. And then, yeah, after that, we came home. I napped for like two to three hours. I was just so painful, so exhausted. Um, and bruising, I think, kind of reached the peak that day. Like, I had bruising all here, here, all the way down. Um, I just, I only imagine what the other parents around me thought happened to me because it was just, it was bruising, like, here and all the way down. Um, say day five, talking was a little bit clearer that day, but it was really painful to talk. And definitely by the end of the day, I didn't want to talk at all. Um, the swelling had gone down a little bit, and I definitely had a little bit more energy. I think that was the first day that I didn't take a nap during the day. I was able to kind of just lay down and rest, but not sleep. Um, again, just trying to eat as much as I could throughout the day. I was starting to feel kind of on the upside of things by day five. Um, day six, so that, so that was Monday. Um, I was definitely starting to feel pretty good. Um, I was up and about kind of during the day, but still keeping it very light. Um, I don't think I really went out that day. Um, yeah, I was pretty much home all day, but just kept it really light. Didn't really nap. Felt good. Um, my bruising was starting to go down. My swelling was starting to go down quite a bit but the biggest thing that happened oh two big things happened on day six one I finally pooped so I went six days without pooping between and this was taking meds actually every single day um so I highly recommend honestly as soon as you're post-op to start taking either a laxative or a stool softener because between the clear liquids, not a lot of calories, the narcotics and opioids, and not really moving a ton, you're going to get constipated. So I finally had a bowel movement. And then the other not so amazing thing that happened is I was going to bed and I had ripped a stitch. So I was in bed and all of a sudden I get this blood of stuff in my mouth and at first I was like maybe um some food was stuck back there and like came into my mouth because I I've been brushing at, like twice a day but it's really hard for me to get back here so I was like maybe there's a piece of food that um I missed that kind of fell into my mouth and so I got up, I brushed again, I rinsed my mouth out with water and um, alcohol free mouthwash, which is what my surgeon recommended. Um, but it was still kind of there. Um, and I went to bed and again, like maybe 10, 20 months later, I still get this, this taste that tastes awful. And I'm like, it's hard to swallow. And so I realize something is very, very wrong. Um, so I get up and I take a flashlight and a mirror. And right here, I had busted a stitch and developed an infection that was leaking into my mouth, which sounds gross. And it was gross. <laughs> um, so I had like pus and blood in my mouth. Um, 
So at this point, it's like 10.30 at night. There's nothing to be done right now. So I packed it with gauze back there and really didn't sleep the rest of the night. I was like between the taste and the sensation and the pain, um, I was up probably every two hours rinsing my mouth, um, rinsing the area, applying gauze, and just trying to make it till morning. Um, so at least into day seven, I I wake up finally, and this side is red, it's swollen, it's hot, um, still leaking into my mouth. So I call my surgeon's office as soon as they open, explain what happened. Um, I had a follow-up appointment the next day, so I asked them to move it to today, and they completely agreed. They knew that this was a situation that needed to be immediately seen. So they got me in first thing in the morning and my surgeon took an x-ray to make sure it was surface and not deeper. And it was, it, everything was fine on the x-ray. Um, my bite was exactly where he wanted it to be. So what had happened is a stitch had ripped open and there was a small surface um, abscess, which was producing gunk and pus and blood. And so he went in and cleaned up the area. He inserted a drain and then he stitched it back up and gave me a special syringe to clean up the drain multiple times a day. So I've been doing that um, now yesterday and today. It's doing much better. I actually go tomorrow to have the drain removed and to stitch it back up. Um, and he also increased my antibiotics and he put me on for another five days of antibiotics. And my antibiotics were set to actually like finish. And so it was my experience with a little post-op infection today. So today's post-day eight. I have much more energy. I actually feel like I can kind of do some light household duties. Um, my appetite is back after yesterday. I had a big smoothie this morning and some soup for lunch. My swelling is much, much better. So this side, my swelling is pretty much gone. Maybe a touch. And I've got a touch right here. Um, and this side is, is about the last of the swelling. Um, in terms of my numbness, and this has been the same all week, is I can feel all here, I can feel all here, I can feel my nose, I can feel my upper lip. It starts right here, and it's just my chin. I can't feel any of this. So starting here, this is my only numb spot. I just remember seeing my surgeon post-op um, at discharge and I was like, you lied to me. I can feel everything. It's just my chin. Cause he told me, he's like, you're really numb potentially from like gear down, but it's only my chin, which is nice actually. So one thing I didn't mention is when they went in on this side, um, my nerve was actually kind of tucked under the muscle and so they did dig it out, which is a little bit of a process. So I may actually be numb, honestly, for six months, potentially. Um, it may come back earlier, but it could be up to six months, which is annoying. But yeah, I'm numb. Um, overall, my talking has, it's still hard and it still gets exhausting on my jaw. Um, but my husband can understand me a lot better. Um, I can breathe through my nose better. So I don't even have to breathe through my mouth. And as far as my weight goes, I'm down about four and a half pounds since surgery. 
so not too terrible though. And I'll do a quick shot of where my jaw is eight days post double jaw surgery. So I started with an open bite. And then, yeah, I saw him, or I bruising goes all the way down to about here. The next couple days, I'd like to post a video of my surgery must have um, that I kind of gathered from various videos and sites and things that have made my recovery so much easier. Um, so hopefully I'll be putting that up in the next couple days if I have time. Um, so yeah, if you have got any questions or comments, post them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And I'll see you next time.